Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Join us for Park and Praise. On Sunday, June 21st, we will praise and worship in the parking lot by way of this in-car worship experience. Please plan to arrive before 9.45 a.m. Communion will also be available. Let's stay connected as we are building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. That's Park and Praise, Sunday, June 21st, beginning at 10 a.m. We now join Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves, Sr. with our message. There's something about that name. Amen. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you once more to ask, Lord, that the spirit of preparation would guide us in the preaching of your word. We give you our undivided attention. We are ready to hear what the spirit has to say. So now, Lord, please speak to us. We need to hear your voice. Bless your people as your word is preached. May your name be enlarged in the hearts of your people. And may we be strengthened to go forth and to do your will is our prayer. We ask God that you would manage my mind, amplify my voice, and set my soul on fire in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Please turn with us in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And we will read it to you from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The scripture says, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. God bless you as you take your seats today. Verse 19 reads again. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, go. I want to talk a little while today from the thought, go hard or go home. Go hard or go home. All of the writers of the gospel, they end the story of Jesus' life and ministry in a different way. The compilation of these 
theological narratives each have their own intent. In other words, each gospel writer had their own agenda. The precise contours of their agenda is hard to reconstruct, uh, but let me just mention them and then focus our attention on the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Mark ends the story of Jesus' life and ministry with the air lingering with fear and confusion. When Luke ends the story, his intention is to create a catwalk between the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. And what he does, in fact, is he connects the ascension of Jesus with the disciples' endowment with the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. John's rendering of the story, he says that I have, that there are many more incidents of the miraculous that I could have told you. There are many more stories. He said there are many other miracles that Jesus did, but he doesn't tell us what they are, but instead, he ends the book by pointing to those that have been recorded to be sufficient enough for our growth and for the strengthening of our faith. However, Matthew ends his gospel with the Great Commission. It's right here in Matthew chapter 28. And again, although it is difficult to try to reconstruct why, they all ended their stories in different ways. We can say with some degree of confidence that Matthew ends uh, his account of the gospel with the Great Commission because he was dealing and writing to a community that was facing internal division and strife. It was a community, my brothers and sisters, that was in dire need of direction, a sense of mission and a sense of call because they were living in a complex world. May I hasten my brothers and sisters to mention, is that not the case for us as well? I, I wanna argue in this sermon today that the complexities of our own society has left us as believers struggling to find ways to remain relevant as the church. I mean, after all, we are the ecclesia. We are the assembly who has been called out to go and make a difference in this world for the sake of God's kingdom. Well, one of the things that we are facing, my brothers and sisters, is that the world around us is changing so rapidly. And sometimes it makes me wonder, as the pastor of this church, what are we supposed to do next? I mean, I mean, think about it. I, I, I sometimes, I mean, I, well, I don't hate to admit it, but I just have to be honest. Sometimes I wrestle with the question, what will be our direction? What should be our focus? Almost daily. I'm praying over how we are called to live out our faith in these last days. Because on a whole lot of levels, it seems like what we're doing ain't working. Can't get no help there. And don't, don't get me wrong now. I'm, I'm still of the opinion that we as the church of Jesus Christ, we still have a lot to offer this generation. The problem is, however, that in this age of secular humanism, uh, the church is no longer attractive. I mean, let's look at it for a moment. Just give me a couple of minutes. I ain't gonna, don't mean to bore you to death, but I do mean to tell the truth. Let, let's look at the harsh realities of the faith 
process of millennials. Millennials, I mean the generation that's born between 1984 and 2002. And the research shows that nearly 60% of these young people who grew up in church, they end up walking away from church. Not only do they walk away from church, they walk away from their faith. Amen. With, within, within 10 years of ever having professed Christ as their Lord and Savior. In the first decade of their adult life, they're not in church. I don't, I don't claim to know what that says about this generation, and I certainly don't know what it's going to mean for the next. Millennials, my brothers and sisters, over the last decade, um, their walking away from church and faith really has mirrored other generations. Amen. There's this large cultural trend of people who don't feel like the church is in style no more. Let me try one more time. Well, that I can do Jesus without the church. In fact, when you ask the young people today, What's responsible for the growth of their faith? May I suggest to you that church doesn't even make the top ten on the list. Instead, most of them will tell you that the driver of their spiritual growth is prayer. Number two on the list is family and friends. Number three on the list is the Bible. Some will say that I grew in my relationship with God when I had children. And others will say, my brothers and sisters, that they cultivated their own relationship with Jesus Christ apart from the church. Now, I'm not trying to paint a picture of gloom and doom, you understand? I'm not really doing that. I, I do believe that uh, even though there are many who are leaving the church and walking away from their faith, there are still some who remain faithful and committed. Amen. But it is increasingly clear, my brothers and sisters, that there are many millennials. In fact, the majority of them are trying to make it spiritually without the church. David Kinsman, who is the president of Bonner Group, and he is the author of two books on this subject. One entitled You Lost Me and a more familiar book called Unchristian. He says that millennials or young people, they are rethinking most of the institutions, including church. Amen. That propose that they have the ability to arbitrate life. Amen. From marriage and media to government and church. Listen, they're looking at all of the institutions and they're rethinking them. Furthermore, he says that millennials say that life is complicated, that it's hard to know how one is really supposed to live. I mean, with the onslaught of information, you got worldviews, they have options at their disposal, amen, and they're faced with them every day. And one of the criticisms that they frequently make about Christianity is that Christianity is not deep enough. It is not thoughtful enough and doesn't know how to handle or to answer the challenging questions that they face in a complex culture. The truth of the matter is, my brothers and sisters, is that this generation is inundated with information and they no longer, listen to me, feel a need to rely on the church to be the sole informer of how life should be lived. I mean, there was a time, I, I, I can testify to this, that you might not agree with everything the church said, but you sure didn't question it. Amen. You, you just went along with it, and you believed that what they were telling you was true. And the reason why we believed what they were telling us was true, in part, was because we didn't have access to other forms of information and ideas like this generation does. This generation says, I don't have to come to church. I just need to sit down at my computer. I wish I had a witness here. 
Many of them feel, praise the Lord, amen, that I, I might not be able to find, amen, true relationships in the church, but Google is my friend. Come on, help me here. Anything I need to know, I can get it off the internet. And uh, I, I, I got to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I'm not here to say that they're wrong. All I'm saying is, is that we as a church, we have to admit to ourselves that, that sometimes we feel out of step with the time. That we're preaching an old story. Y'all don't want to help me here. And, and we don't know how to make that old story good to this generation. Well, the question is, my brothers and sisters, if we sometimes feel like we're out of step with this generation, how do you think this generation feels about us? In fact, I, I mentioned this to you, uh, and part, part of it to you anyway. I was talking with a millennial, a pastor, in fact, a couple of weeks ago on this very subject, and I said to him that although his generation is high on information, my humble opinion is that they are low on wisdom. They are informed, but they have yet to learn how to interpret. Make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters, the world will inform you, but wisdom comes from God. The question then, my brothers and sisters, becomes how do we appeal to this generation without losing a sense of our immutable assignment? Because the assignment is clear. It's right here in Matthew 28. We are told to go and we are told to make disciples. It's, as I mentioned, an immutable assignment. It's, a, it's an assignment that's not going to change with every changing generation. In every generation, we are called as believers, as the ecclesia, as the assembly who has been called out to make disciples within the context of our generation. Now, hear me when I tell you that I believe that the church, parents, organizational leaders like myself, we all of us need to be open to learn everything we can about this young generation. We need to be open to learn so that we can maximize our efforts to somehow spiritually engage them. However, I think it's also important to mention that though we should be open to them so as to spiritually engage them, it's important that we don't idolize them. I wish y'all would talk to me. Because we idolize this emerging generation, we create another form of ageism, and we got to be careful about that. And, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I heard this at, at, uh, at both pastorates, this church and the church I pastored before. One of the things that I always got as a young man was, what you going to do for the children? as if grown folk don't need no attention. I got that all the time. What are you gonna do for the kids? We, we sometimes idolize the young generation. And what, we don't, what we fail to realize is that we are creating compartments. We're really distancing ourselves and segregating ourselves from that population. We're hoping for the best for them we really don't want to spiritually engage them. We want somebody else to do that. I can't get no, oh, I'm on the right street now. Yeah, yeah. Got to be careful about that. But having said that, I still need to point out that millennials need to be a priority. Amen. Not, not simply because we got to serve our youth, but millennials need to be a priority because this generation is trying to learn how to be faithful in a rapidly changing world, amen, in the midst of a culture and a society that boasts of postmodernism. We, we need to pay attention and, and make the younger generation a priority. And what they need, I know they don't think they do, but what they need, they need the help of faithful believers from older generations. They're going to be able to make sense of it all. Listen, 
and move meaningfully forward in their life and faith. And so I want to unpack, if I can, just give me about 10 minutes. I want to unpack Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, because I, I believe that if we take a, a deeper look at it, it, it offers us an opportunity to discover how we can not only fulfill our assignment, but make sure that nobody gets lost in the process. Amen. The, the, the commission is clear. It is given by Christ. Verse 19, it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can I pause right there? I know it sounds like a Monday night, but just stay with me. I'm teaching. I got to do this. Just look here. Therefore, it says, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, of course, when we think of nations, we're thinking of cultures. Uh, but it's not just about nations in terms of cultures. Amen. It's also referring to generations. There, just as there are differences between cultures, there are differences in every generation. And those who have been given the responsibility to make disciples, come on, cannot discriminate. Y'all ain't talking to me. We, we've got to engage people of all kinds. Listen, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. May I suggest to you that despite our differences, amen, there is a commonality that we can all find in Christ Jesus. I wish somebody would talk to me. Amen. It doesn't really matter how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. There's something about Jesus. Amen. All of us, amen, are called to find our place in Christ. And that's what the scripture means when it says baptizing. We're thinking only of water baptism. It's, it's way past that. We're, can I tell you, my brothers, we so far past water baptism. Amen. We're, we're talking about, amen, expressing the nature and the character of who Christ is and, and to be willing to, to live out that kind of life. Amen. No matter where life takes us before anybody at any place, at any time, and listen, and the influence of the character of Christ in us, amen, can become so consuming that others, come on, are enveloped in it. I wish I had a witness here. To the point that we are no longer defined by the things that make us different. That's what he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then teach these new disciples. To obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the relevant question is then, now, children, how can we get this done? How can we get it done? Um, let me just say before I give you that, this is really the, this is really the, the crux of my sermon. Um, but I knew the Holy Spirit had already told me the house was going to be absolutely quiet. I'm serious. If I beg for a couple of amens, I really don't care if you give them to me because the Holy Ghost done prepared me for this moment. Because when it comes to us as Christians intentionally sharing our faith and living for Christ, we are not all as committed as we claim to be. In fact, there's a great disinterest on this matter. Amen. And what we have to remember is that what the Lord is telling us in Matthew 28 is not a suggestion. It's a command. Come on, talk to me. And so, and so, and so, so my lesson today is that when it comes to engaging this generation who is walking away from church, walking away from their faith, Amen. Who was saying that the church is and all of, with all of its services and singing and shouting is too shallow for me and then help me to deal with the issues that are wrestling within my soul. And no matter how much I pray, they don't go away. 
Let me try one more time. I've, I've got some nagging concerns. I don't know where they come from. I wish somebody would talk to me. Amen. And I don't know how to get rid of them. And then I don't even know if I should. Now, come on, help me here. I don't know what's natural. I don't know what's unnatural. I don't know what's spiritual. Come on, help me. Some. I, I got some questions, and I don't have very many answers. And I'm coming to church, but I'm walking away the same as I leave church than I was when I came. I, I, listen, I... Maybe we're not doing something right. Maybe, 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 my brothers and sisters, uh, we have we have been given by Christ uh, the right thing to do, but maybe we're not doing it in the right way. Can I help y'all with this? This, this? this this may not this may bust you in the head and all that because you know you know we think we something at the church sometimes, Lord. Woo we, we, we love to be celebrated, but we don't like to be challenged. But, but I'm sorry, that's all I got today. I got a challenge. We'll celebrate another time. But I got to tell you that, that when, we are, when we are called by Christ, amen, and given this assignment to engage the world, we gotta, it's important that we not make it doctrinal, but missional. That, that's our problem. That's our problem. See, that whole word, that missional, missions, oh, Lord, gee, what is that? That's for somebody else. That's, ain't, that, ain't that the folk that go overseas? Well, if you feel that way, that means I haven't done my job. Lord, have mercy. Amen. I got to talk to you today. Listen, listen, because sometimes this whole idea of being, you know, when sh sharing Christ, we have a tendency of making it doctrinal. Amen. In other words, uh, we, we, we make the principles of the word and place a, 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 a let me say it this way, we place a higher priority on the principles of God rather than the people of God. I can't get no help here. And what you got to remember that the principles have always been about the people. Try one more time. Listen, you're not going to get anybody to even consider Christ if, if you don't first value them as a person. If, if, if you're trying to give them all of the rules and regulations, amen, but you don't open yourself up to having a meaningful relationship with people, people don't care what you say. Amen. They, 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 care, they, they could care less about what's coming out of your mouth if they can't feel nothing real coming from your heart. Let me try one more time. You, you, you got you, you to gotta make people your mission. That, and listen, we, we, we got, we, as a church, we have to be concerned about people no matter who they are and where they are and where we find them. Y'all want to help me here. That I, I know, I know you, already, you already got a group that you don't want to fool with and you got, you got a gang that you don't want to mess with. Well, I got to tell you, my brothers and sisters, amen, like the title of our sermon says, if you ain't going to go hard, you need to go home. I wish I had a witness here because the world is too complex. I wish I had a people are struggling in society today trying to make sense of life and faith. Do I have a, they need somebody that's willing to walk with them and to have a real relationship with them. Amen. Amen. The priority must not be on trying to indoctrinate people. Get them to believe what you believe and say what I say and walk like I walk. We're not trying to make clones. We're trying to make disciples. God help me preach your word today. Everybody ain't got to be like you in order to be right. Jesus said, I've got some sheep that don't even belong to this fold. I got some other folk. About doctrinal, I, I mean, just what I say, amen. Or even you can say denominational, amen. The doctrinal, whatever the case may be, amen. We got to stop making, come on, taking our assignment and making it purely doctrinal, but make it missional, amen. 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 Listen, listen, listen. Jesus says to us, amen, that the greatest 
testimony, the litmus test, amen, uh, of, of our faith is in our love for others. <laughs> you know you're real <laughs> when you got a love for other people. I, I, I'm talking about folk who walk in crooked. I'm talking about folk who ain't living right. Come on, help me here. And it, this, it, there's no discrimination no matter where you find them. I love you. And I make it my mission to be in relationship with you. Are y'all going to talk to me? Maybe not. Okay, I'll go another further. So I won't keep you all day. But listen, fulfilling our assignment, we got to make it not so doctrinal. But make it more missional. But number two, it cannot be monological. It must be dialogical. Let me try it one more time. There is this notion, my brothers and sisters, of reverse mentoring. Because sometimes, 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 if we're not careful the way we behave, the way we talk, we act like we got all the answers for everybody. Amen. That we are the sole proprietors of truth. Come on, help me here. And we can tell everybody what they're supposed to be doing. Well, 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 I don't know. Maybe you may have a truth to tell. But the truth is we can learn from each other. The conversation, come on, Dr. Todd, help me right along through here, cannot be a one-way street. Do I have a witness in the building? I've got to tell you, when Dr. Todd was coming up, you know, and sharing with us about the dialogical method of teaching, so I ain't want to hear that stuff. I ain't want to hear that because, you know, that's not what I do on Monday nights. I just lecture to tell y'all what I'm going to tell y'all. Don't nobody say nothing until I finish. I'm done. I'll, I'll, <laughs> but I got to say, amen, that uh, teaching PLI, amen, and get, engaging in dialogical conversation, I have learned so much. Amen. You think you know, but sometimes God has got, has a message for you that's wrapped up in another human personality. I wish I had a witness here. And, and the conversation can't be a one-way street. Do I have a witness here? That, that while we're talking to millennials, I wish I had a witness here. Listen, they got information that we need to know, and we have an interpretation that they need to hear. I wish somebody would help me here. In other words, we, we got to have talks that are intended to teach and not just tell. Because you know we big on telling somebody what to do. I'm going to tell you how to get straight and I'm going to tell you how to get right. No, I mean, we have to have talks that are didactic in nature that help us to learn from each other. I wish I had a witness here. Don't ever get to the place, amen, where you think you know everything about everything because life will show you, amen, that when you reach that place, you know very little. Come on, help me here. We can all learn from one another. Let me try one more time. One of the things that made that hard for me, before I went to school, got any formal training, I'd already got Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, when I went to school, I was already satisfied with Jesus. I, I, I received the information. Do I have a witness here? But I didn't have to internalize all of it. Y'all want to help me here. I received it, amen, because it helped me to grow, amen. And, and in some cases, it helped to shape and to build my faith, but it didn't change fundamentally what I knew by way of experience about Christ. I wish y'all would talk to me. That's why you can't be afraid, amen, as a follower of Jesus Christ to have a redemptive conversation with somebody, amen, who's not of the same faith. Come on, who's of another the generation you got to know in whom you believe do I have a witness here amen you're not having the conversation amen expecting somebody to change your mind you're having the conversation trying to build relationship trying to build relationship listen to me listen to me because I, I am i am convinced my brothers and sisters across the board whether it's the millennials or some other generation boomer generation that, that i'm in may i suggest to you that for all of us when we learn better we'll live better Am I making some sense here? Is that your testimony? Amen. When you learn better, you tend to live better. 
Praise the Lord. I did a whole lot of stuff. Just didn't know no better. But pray. But let me tell you something. Now, when <laughs> praise the Lord, when you learn better, it's accounted to you to do. There's an expectation placed upon you. To have, do I have a witness here to do what you have now learned to do? Can't, it can't be. It can't be monological. Got to be dialogical. I come from a generation where, man, you know, we didn't, you know, with our elders. We ain't get a chance to say a whole lot. Amen. I tried to raise my kids that way, but it didn't really work like talking about it. Sometimes it kind of. Amen. And I felt it was disrespect that they had an opinion. That on some things they wanted to challenge what I said. And the truth of the matter is, I was so small, I couldn't receive somebody else's opinion if it won't mine. Oh, now you won't get quiet. You left me out there hanging. Let's see how y'all do. You know I ain't by myself. But 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 I had I had a I had a frame of formation. Amen. And, 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 and that I had grown comfortable with. It may not have been the best scenario, but it was all I knew. You have a witness here. And, and, and may, may I add, I may have missed out on some opportunities to learn some things. I wish I had a witness here. If I had not just been doing all the talking, but had been doing some listening too. Can I go another further here? Can, can I tell you that that in the fulfilling of our assignment, it can't all be theological. It's got to be vocational. Listen to me. Uh, got to be careful because, you know, we always tell them folk what they ought to believe. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm the primary proponent of that. The Bible said, I'm going to say it probably before the sermon over. Because I believe what the Bible says. You got to stress the Bible. The Bible. It don't, don't sound as good unless you do. Anyway. <laughs> and a person's theology is important. But sometimes a person's theological formation is shaped as a matter of practice. Amen. You have to, we have to get people to see not only their life, because you know how we are about that. We look at somebody else's life, we can always see all the flaws, don't we? Yeah, all the scratches and scrapes, everything that ain't right. Oh, boy, we can sure point out something else about another person. Can't see nothing about ourselves. Just look at me. Don't look around. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking about your name. I'm talking about you. But we, listen, it's not, listen, we cannot just show them life, but we have to also show them that encouched within their life is a sense of call. You got to do something with the life you have. I wish I had a witness here. It's, it's not just about profession. It's about practice. Amen. There, there is a connection, my brothers and sisters, and this is one of the things that, uh, that may grieve me to some extent about this generation, perhaps about mine, because I think, I think every generation, what we, what we see now in a great way, we saw in some sense in my own generation, and it may have been in a generation before mine. Uh, but, but I, but I got to tell you that, that you have to get people to see that there is a connection between what they believe and what they do. Amen. Matter of fact, what one does is a true indication of what they believe. Let me try it one more time. Folk might do one thing and say something else. No, you look at what they do. And what one does reveals what they really believe. Are y'all going to help me preach here? 
Amen. And, and, this, and listen, and listen, when we're, when we're sharing our faith, amen, because we're living in a time now where, again, of secular humanism, folks say, I can do whatever I want to do, but I still love Jesus. No, hold on a minute. Now, just hold on a minute. Amen. You say you can do whatever you want and still be in right relationship with Jesus, and you doing stuff that Jesus didn't even do. I can't get no help right long through that. Now, somebody tell me a lie. That's all I'm saying. I ain't saying it's you. I'm just saying somebody's confused. Amen. Somebody's telling a lie. Amen. Because there must be some consistency in our character as in the character of Christ. If we're going to be disciples of Christ, then in fact, we are followers of Jesus Christ. We put our steps in his tracks. Y'all want to help me? And even if you got an inclination, even if you got a bent, even if you got a leaning in one direction or another, when you decide to follow Christ, Christ, I wish I had a witness here. Your personal individuality has got to be erased to some extent so that I can fully, faithfully follow Jesus Christ. That means, my brothers and sisters, that now that I follow Jesus, I can't do everything that I think I'm grown enough to do. And to do it without conscience. You don't want to help me here. And to think I can do it without consequence. No, that ain't how it works. not theological because we can debate theological issues forever amen but i can't keep lying about what i'm doing y'all ain't gonna help me right along through that amen there is a connection matter of fact may i suggest i don't want to just beat up millennials i need to talk about the church that the same is true for us there is a connection between what we do and what we really believe. Can't get no help right long through there. Amen. Amen. We say that we are concerned about people. We say that we are missional. Y'all don't want to help me here. But sometimes what we do as a church does not reflect what we say. And you only going to say even those things that you truly believe. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I wish somebody would talk to me. Oh, no, no. We, this, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know y'all want to shout today. Yeah, I'm not sorry. I'm just playing. I got one more to tell you, and I promise to let y'all go. Go. To all the world. But when you go, don't make it so doctrinal. Make it missional. Don't make it so monological. Make it dialogical. Don't make it so theological, make it vocational. But listen, as we go, we got to stop being so hierarchical and be more relational. One of the one of the one of the one of the claims of millennials is that they don't want to wait in line until they get a certain age to be viewed as acceptable for service. Let me try one more time. You want my money, but you don't want my gifts. Said, oh, boy. I done lost all the old folk now. You're like, huh, I done, I done had to wait in line. Y'all going to wait, too. Well, then they said, no, we don't want to wait in line. We don't want Because cause, cause, cause we're college trained now. I wish y'all would talk to me. Amen. We, 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 have, we have more information at our disposal than you had in your generation. We, we can get some things done. We may not have all the wisdom, but we do have knowledge. I wish I had a witness here. And, 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 and knowledge counts for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how we do. I, I, grew, up, I grew up in church like that. Amen. They, they made a little space for, us, for the young folks. Quiet usher boys. Two choices. Everything else we saw people doing. And uh, you had to wait till you got on the cane to get that position. You had to wait till you looked good in a long white dress below your knees and some old nurse's shoes. Remember them shoes they wear? Had to wait. Had to wait your turn. 
And, and, and what millennials are saying is, if I got to wait, I'd much rather wait in the world. I don't want to wait here in the church. And I see around me images, y'all want to help me here, and examples of what I could be and what I could doing. It's so close to me, it's within my grasp, but y'all won't let me have it. I wish y'all would help me preach. Amen. We got, listen, we got to create a climate within the community that is inclusive. Amen. And stop, and stop, my brothers and sisters, uh, 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 intentionally separating ourselves from people who are not all today that they are going to be. Because if the truth be told, even for those of us who waited in line when we got our shot, we still won't stray. Don't y'all look at me with that tone of voice because I'm liable to cuss on a good sermon. Don't do it. Don't do it. You look like you fit the bill on the outside. But you had some stuff going on where folk couldn't see. But they still gave you a shot. And truth be this, and you've been holding position forever, and you still ain't got your raggedy self together. Don't you hold nobody back. It's a shame. We're trying to hold back and hold down those whom the Lord's trying to raise up. God, I feel it in my spirit. God is still committed. To this generation like he's been to every other generation. And how dare we as an institution get in their way. Give them a shot. And help them. Help them. Because the truth is, on the one hand, they don't know what they're asking for. They're asking for a position, which is fine. That's for an opportunity, which is fine. But the scripture doesn't say for us to just give an opportunity, give them a shot. I don't mind giving you a shot, an opportunity, if it's going to help me help you to become a disciple. Look at somebody say, I can work with you after you get here. Yes, I can. I can. We can. Let's, come on, let's get together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's form a community that's inclusive. Let's learn from each other. Let's grow together. Do we have a witness here? Amen. And, and, and let's learn, amen, how to be the community of faith in our generation. So go hard. So go home. Amen. We got to give this our undivided attention. We got to put the weight of who we are behind it. Amen. And I, I'm not going to let it be said, I pray, that my season has passed, or our season has passed, in fact, and we didn't try. But are you listening to me? No, no, we're going to do something. I don't know what the something is altogether, but we're going to learn together what that something should be. And when I say to you, go hard, go home, what I mean by that is, again, we must be very intentional, very focused. Amen. Or don't bother with it. Don't even fool with it. The last thing this generation needs is what we gave the last generation. We just placated them. We put them on stage. Let them shine for five minutes. Clap for them. But didn't make disciples of them. What do you think they're going to do when they start they're able to make up their own mind? They're going to do like I did. I had church in me, but I didn't have Jesus in me. I left the church, left the faith, because I didn't have something on the inside. Come on, talk to me. Because those who had it, 
as a young person, I had no real relationship. Oh, don't, get, don't get me wrong. There are many precious people in my life that I connected with visually. I could see that there was something of substance, something significant, something spiritual. And I loved them as I could, but I really didn't know them. They were grown folk. Grown folk were hanging out. The kids come around. They got to get out of there. Go on about your business, boy. I wish y'all would talk to me. You trying to be too grown, hanging around old folk. Get on out of here and play with the cheering. This may not shout you, but this is going to help somebody. Amen. That, 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 that's, that's the environment I grew up in. I, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not, listen, again, I'm not trying to paint a picture of gloom and doom because I, you know, I ain't as jacked up as I used to be. Praise Lord, I'm all right. Amen. I pray I'm getting better every day. Come on. Amen. But, but can, can we imagine how further along we could have been if we stopped being so scared of one another? Go hard or go home. The emphasis is on the word hard. As I close. How many times I said it? Second. As I close a third time. It's not hard to be forgiving. This is how we create a climate of inclusion. No relationship can survive without forgiveness. How many of you are on the next relationship because you couldn't forgive in the last one? We make it hard. The forgiveness is not hard. Paul says to the church at Ephesus, in Ephesians 4 and verse 32, he said, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. It ain't hard to forgive. If it's hard for you to forgive, it's because your heart is hard. And more importantly, your head may be too. You don't forgive because you don't want to at the end of the day. And I'm not trying to make light of your hurt. But I am trying to shed some light on how God in Christ forgave you. If you can receive it when you didn't deserve it. How dare you keep it from somebody else? Our church is filled with people who have made mistakes. The room is filled right now with people who have made mistakes. Forgive them. Let it go. You're walking around with a hatchet in your hand and a halo on your head. Mind your business if you can't forgive them. Who do you think you are? You better go on somewhere before you get a two-piece. I'm telling you, right, boy? I'm you. I mean that. It ain't hard to forgive. The community can't survive. The church can't be affected. Uh, effective if we keep walking in unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit will not be free to move. I wish I had a witness here. Until we learn how to forgive, we won't see the power of God in our generation manifest until we learn how to forgive each other. And we must be intentional about it. So in the area of forgiveness, I'm telling you again, go hard or go home. 
You're going to be walking around here with a bunch of negativity spewing out of your mouth. Always got condemnation. I would much rather you join somebody else's church. Don't bring that foolishness around here. Because somebody's coming to church on Sunday morning. And they're looking for a move of God. And you with your judgmental self. You're getting in the way. I wish I had a witness here. Just let go and let God have his way in that person's life. It's not hard to be forgiving. But it's not hard to be faithful. Listen to me. I'm talking about faithful to this generation. Faithful in the sense of being dependable and loyal and dedicated. Amen. A lot of millennials, they don't want to mention it out loud. You know they're talking about their mamas and daddies. But I suspect many of them were walking away from the church and from their faith because they saw high levels of unfaithfulness. Yeah, they saw schizophrenic spirituality. They grew up around saints with multiple personalities. Are y'all going to help me? They saw one thing on Sunday, but saw something else. Come on, help me here. Amen. We, we got to be faithful, got to be accountable. That's probably the best word that I can use. Amen. That when relating, amen, this generation, we must be accountable as a church. Accountable as followers of Jesus Christ. You say, Rev, I don't know what you're talking about. It ain't hard to be. Yes, it is hard to be faithful. Wait a minute. It ain't hard to keep your word when you say you're going to do something. I mean, now, barring extenuating circumstances, unforeseen issues, amen, let your word be your bond. Amen. Don't hold nobody else to a standard that you yourself won't live. And if you're called to walk in relationship with somebody and your stuff ain't straight, admit it. And say, you pray for me and I'll pray for you. I mean, come on, don't act like you better. And you know you ain't. Because as soon, come on, you tell them you're better, they're going to believe you're better. Then they're going to see that you ain't. Y'all want to help me here. And it's going, to, it's going to ruin the formation of their faith. Be faithful. Be accountable. Amen. To this generation. The Bible says that we should never aspire to something that is beyond what our faith can handle. Amen. Yes, we are. We're reaching for the mark of the prize. Come on, the higher calling of God is in Christ Jesus. Absolutely so. Amen. Amen. But don't go past what your faith can handle. Are y'all going to talk to me? The seven sons of Siva did that. Amen. They tried to act like they was more spiritual than they were. They were pretending like they could drive out demons. Amen. They didn't drive them out, but they came out. Them demons came out and jumped on them. And last time we saw them, they were running away naked. Lastly, 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 listen to me, listen to me. It's not hard to be forgiven, it's not hard to be faithful, but it's not hard to be friendly. Amen. A friend loves at all times. And a brother or a sister is born for adversity. Amen. There's a deacon said to me, I don't, I don't know why I brought up a deacon, but a man, I'm sorry. A man came to me. Well, he was a deacon, so I got to put it in context. And he said to me, honestly, he said, he said uh, Reverend, he said, I'm, I'm with you. 
as long as you're doing right. And I wish I had known that phrase back then, bye Felicia, because that's what I would have told him. <laughs> I'd have told him bye, I didn't know what to say about it. <laughs> yeah. I said, when I'm doing right, God got me. I don't need you then. I need you when I'm wrong. I wish I need you to be my friend. Come on, help me here. Amen. When when when, when I'm wrong, I, I don't need you to be my enemy. I need you to be my friend. I wish somebody would talk to me. I mean, I, I can't even express to you, my brother, but perhaps you can just grab the mic and testify for yourself. You know how rewarding it has been during those periods of your life, amen, where, where you are experiencing adversity, some self-created, uh, some of it created for you by others, amen. But what you needed in that moment was not another enemy. You didn't need somebody to run you down. You needed a friend. I wish somebody would help me here. And the Bible says again, amen, in Proverbs 17 and 17, that a friend loves at all times, not just some of the time, not when I'm standing up and walking straight, but when life has knocked me down. I do have a witness here. On the heel of my failures, what I could use right about now is not a financial blessing. I need a friend. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I I need a friend, and listen, and we ought to be able to create an atmosphere of friendliness in the house of God. Amen. It's not hard to be friendly. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We ain't going to shout. But if we were, this would be a good place. Right here. All it would take, 35, 45 seconds of remember, remembering where you were, what you were doing, when you experienced God's love, you didn't have it all together, but he loved you anyway. Forget about the crossing T's and dotting I's. You won't even write nothing with your life. You were just, you were just living life on your own terms, but the Lord loved you anyway. He loved you and I when we were unaware of his love. And now that we are aware of it, he says, you love other people the same way. Get your stinking stuck up cell. Amen. Don't, 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 don't try to close me down. I ain't ready to go yet. I know. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Yeah. When I need you, I'll come get you. Don't do that. You know, he start playing the music like he's getting ready. No, no, I ain't finished. I ain't finished. I'm done. Listen, iron sharpens iron. Can I end with that? Because we look at this generation and we don't think that they're iron. We think that there are, they are some other material. It's not as strong and sturdy. Doesn't have the ability to be sharp. They're just iron. That's just like us. But we all need to be sharpened a little bit. So the Lord says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, very familiar passage of scripture. Right? It says, Behold, if any man be in Christ, a person be in Christ, they are a new creature. It says, Old things pass away, and all things become new. But well, you do know there's some verses before verse 16. One important verse is verse 15. But Paul says, I used to view everyone according to the flesh. He said, but I no longer do this. If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. You got to stop seeing people. 
and only seeing their faults and failures and mistakes and their past history. You got to stop. You got to stop viewing people according to their flesh. They have great potential. They will soon be generals in the kingdom of God. And already, if they're born again, they're operating as a kingdom of priests. They may be young. So are all of us. So are all of us. So are all of us. And some of us, when we were young, we are not, we were not like some of these. At least they still in the church. They may come once a month. Some of y'all remember y'all were too drunk to come anywhere on Sunday. You need an extra day. Go hard. Go hard. Or go home. That is our challenge today. So in this liturgical season, we celebrate the life and miniature of Christ. We've got to bring it to a close. Amen. Because we're getting ready to show sure enough, turn it up. Because Pentecost Sunday coming. Pentecost Sunday coming. We gotta make our way to Pentecost. We gotta turn up. Amen. Amen. But we gotta we gotta we gotta bring this season of preaching to a close with a challenge. Go hard or go home. Let us be serious about our assignment. That's not going to change. And let's take it on. Let's be open. Let's be inviting. Let's be a blessing to this, to this generation. I don't want to be that old person that's just tolerated and not loved and honored because I was unwilling to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I want to make a difference. You say, well, some of y'all saying, well, that don't matter to me. I just want to go home to see Jesus. Well, guess what? When you get there, though, that's if you make it all the way. You're going to have to answer for how you treated the ones whom the Lord loves. And you didn't want to be bothered with. Does that make sense to you? All right, I'm done. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to pray this little prayer. And then we're going to extend an invitation. Amen. What I'm going to ask you to do, if you feel like it, is that when you get home, and you remember this sermon today, if you feel like it, shout all around your house. You can get your shot on at the house. You I'm talking about knock over your own furniture and stuff. <laughs> Bow your heads as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray, Lord, that it will mean much to us and that it won't soon leave us. We pray that all of us have been in some way challenged and convicted in our soul. So while millennials are rethinking church, maybe we need to rethink how we do church and to answer that question, deal with that issue of relevancy in this generation. We know what the assignment is, but Lord, teach us creative ways to carry it out. Help us, Lord, to be redemptive in our process to see value everywhere we go in everything that we do and in all those that we are called to reach. Help us never, Lord, to minimize a person's 
personality, character, potential. Because all we like sheep have gone astray. We, in a very real sense, nobody's better than anybody else. We, we may be different. We may have different experiences, been exposed to different things. But again, Lord, we find a sense of commonality at the foot of the cross. Help us to find that place. Help us to make circles there and to form communities there, right in the shadow of the cross. May the cross loom large over our, all of our lives to remind us where we could have been had it not been for Jesus. And help us, Lord, to receive each other as brothers and sisters. Until we do that, your coming, your suffering, your death, your resurrection, and your ascension apparently has not meant much to us. We are called now to the ministry of reconciliation to go and to reconcile the world by example through conversations, building relationships, help and assist people from moving from one side of the ledger to the other. In Jesus' name, we receive this word. We take on the assignment. The people of God said amen. If this sermon has been a blessing to you, won't you put your hands together and give God some praise today? Amen. God bless you today. We're going to ask our officers to come or our ministers. Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's assignment? Amen. We want to extend this invitation. Come on, let's all rise to our feet. I'm the only one been standing. Amen. Y'all sat down on me a whole lot today. So y'all, come on, y'all ain't tired. I know you ain't. Come on, let's stand and receive with joy whom the Lord is going to send. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you would just don't don't go to don't why are y'all leaving in mass? Where y'all going? Amen. I know you ain't gonna look back, but that's all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to stay, don't want you to leave. Amen. If there's someone in here today who has not received Christ as their personal Savior, and you sense that that's something that you need to do. We would love to lead you in that process, to walk with you. Amen. If you would just come forward today, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's not about meeting the approval of the pastor or the church. It's about being in the right relationship that you should be with Jesus Christ. So come on and get that straight. That's not something you can do in a corner. Amen. You need to do that. At the first opportunity that you have a sense of awareness of that deep-seated need within your life that only the Lord can fill, I'm going to ask you to come. Come and let Jesus make the difference in your life. And while you're coming, I want to extend another invitation to somebody who's already saved. But you don't have a church home or you're in between places. Perhaps you feel like the Lord is directing you towards Good Shepherd that this is the place where you ought to be, I want to invite you to come. Come forward today, our deacons and aisle, and they're ready to help you walk forward. Salvation and membership come. Maybe you're in the military and um, you're here stationed in this area for a little while. You can come and join. Amen. Amen. We'll take nothing away from where you may have held membership in the past, but you need to be more than just showing up on Sunday morning. Amen. You need to make your calling and your election sure. You need to work out your soul's salvation. Amen. With a sense of urgency. So we welcome you today. If you'll come all over the building, come. Salvation and membership. Please come. the 
mention of your name. Every knee shall bow and tongue proclaim. While they're singing, Jesus. we invite you to come to the altar today very quickly. This is a challenge for all of us. And if you're serious like I am, you are Savior, you let no are soul be lost. Lord, and you are God. You glad about where you are in Jesus, but, but maybe you've got a baby or a grandbaby. Maybe you've got someone else you know that needs to come along. I want you to come. If for nothing else but to stand in proxy for them. I want you to come. And I'm going to tell you, what I have learned is that while we're taking care of God's business, God is taking care of ours. If you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, then all the other things that you might come to the altar today to pray for, the Lord says, I'll add those things to you. I just need you to put me first. And I got you. I'm going to ask you to come. God bless you today. I don't want to create a logistical log jam, but the Holy Spirit just laid something on my heart, and I want to be obedient today. So if you're here in the room and you were born between 1984 and 2002, would you raise your hands if you're in the building? Between 1984 and 2002, raise them up. For those of you who are, I want you to come forward, please. If you're already here, you'll stand here. Between 1984 and 2002, if anybody's pushing up, coming. I want you to let them through, please. Let the young people through, because I want them up front where I can see them. I mean, some of, the, some of the older saints, if y'all just push back and let them come forward. Amen. Y'all come where I can see you. Amen. 1984, 2002. Come on. Come on up a little close. There's room up here. Come up front. Don't be afraid. Let them through. If you feel somebody pushing, let them through. Let them through. Amen. God bless you. I see you coming. Amen. Come on. That's it. Amen. Y'all help me out, first of all. Was I totally off today about everything I was saying? Was I backwards or a little bit? Anybody? Uh, you had them feelings too, player? Oh, okay. I'm just making sure because I don't know. I'll be reading books and things. I don't know. I need to talk to y'all a little more. Amen. So, all right. So, all right. So, first thing I want to say to you, really, from my heart, um, is don't give up on the church because I made that mistake. I made that mistake, you know, just, you know, cause I won't thinking straight, you know, drugs will mess your mind up. Sure will. It sure will. It'll cloud you up. And, um, you know, stuff you be talking about and thinking about really don't matter. But in, in my mind, it was real. And I left the church. I'm talking about with a daddy or pastor raised right or raised well. Let me say it that way. Raised well. I took off because I didn't have nothing inside. But I got to tell you the truth. All the time I was in church, I really didn't let nothing get inside. That's what really happened. I had a shot. I just didn't take it. I took my chances with myself and with my friends and with drugs and what have you. And I made a, for me, I made a more wrong move. I, I, I really think in, in my mind that it was going to work out different for me. 
that I was going to escape, you know, what I knew were the consequences of my actions and stuff. I just didn't think I'd be the one that would suffer from an addiction. I didn't think that. I really didn't think that. I was having fun. I was maintaining. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was doing. But if you ask me any day of the week, I had an answer for you, though. I had all the answers. Amen. So don't lead a church. That's what the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is that um, if we stay true to our word, what we preach, what we try to do, cross the hall for those of you who go, who are still young enough for that, you got to meet us halfway. My mama used to make neck bones on Thursday. You ever tell you all that story? You don't want to hear the neck bone story? You don't want to hear the neck bone story. It's a good story. My mom used to make neck bones on Thursday. You can imagine now. You know. Well, let me just say that Thursday was my least favorite day. I didn't want to come inside for dinner. And so I always express my distaste for neck bones, you know. And says, it's neck bones, bro. I would always protest. I would hardly eat them and just, just cry when I was smaller. And she said to me, she said, listen. She said, if you eat these neck bones or try to eat them, she said, I'll fix you what you want later. But you got to come and get what's on the table. That's right. We can't. I know you're old enough to understand this. It's just, it's not, it's irresponsible for us to try to cater to everybody and give everybody everything they want. There's no way we could keep that up. And furthermore, I don't think you'd be satisfied. I think what you would appreciate more is some consistency, faithfulness, accountability on our part. But you got to meet us halfway. You can't get so caught up and what you're doing in the world and so forth that you just don't think about the church. Because can I give you wisdom? Like you, got the, you got more information than I do. My grandchildren can work my iPad better than I can. And I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You got the information I want to give you some wisdom. You're going to need the church. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not because of the people in it. It ain't like you need us necessarily. You're going to need the church because the church is not my creation. Amen. I, we didn't make the church. This is the Lord's will. He is, he is, God has, in Christ Jesus, has created the church. The, even the institution of the church, if you will, to provide space for you to grow spiritually together. Don't try to do everything by yourself. You're going to need somebody. Don't alienate people. You're going to need somebody. You're going to need somebody to tell you the truth despite the facts. And maybe what we have not been doing, we haven't been holding your hand. We haven't been putting arm around your shoulder. Maybe we haven't been close enough to even build a relationship where you would even care about anything we have to say. And for that, we apologize. I want to encourage you. I want to pray over you. Amen. That together that you'll find your place where you're supposed to be don't be ashamed of who you are you are a lot of things but you are a child of God don't ever be ashamed of that don't ever be ashamed of that don't ever amen I don't care you know you like you're gonna have a whole lot of friends that may not love the Lord or that kind of thing don't go to church they got another faith experience but don't you be ashamed of who you are because I guarantee you they won't be ashamed of who they is did I say is? 
y'all inform, what's the right way to say it? R. Yeah. So don't you be ashamed at all. All right? Okay, so if you were born like in 1927, no, I'm just playing. But if you're older than these who are in front of us today, I want you to stretch your right hand out. Come on, we're going to pray. That's how we're going to end the day. We're going to pray for them. Amen. Pray for our millennials. And I'm just giving y'all the title that I don't know who tagged it. Amen. But I don't see you just as a group. I see you as individuals. I see you finding your way. Yeah. We're going to pray for you. Devil, when I, when I share my story, the devil always tells me not to do it. He wants to get me to shy away from it. But I got to. You got to know what's real. If I can find my place. Amen. And be a servant of the Lord at this stage of my life. You can too. Amen. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be some trials and tribulations. Amen. But I tell you what I did do. As we pray, I just decided that I was gonna do something for myself, and I was gonna do what God wanted me to do. I, I mean, I was so tired, so exhausted trying to measure up <sighs> just exhausted my way won't work it I was faking it I just got so tired I just surrendered I gave up sound like a punk don't I I gave up I gave in to the Lord my life is so much better it's been a trip. But it's so much better. In times like these, come on, stretch that hand. We need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Hallelujah. My prayer for you is that your anchor will grip and hold to the solid rock. That solid rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for our young people who are before us today. We just pray your best. That it will be made evident in their lives. We, we pray, Lord, that that which they cannot get from the church or don't get. And Lord, Wherever we fall short, Lord, give them what they need. Don't let us be the cause of them missing heaven. But we know what's going to happen, Lord. We know that as they grow in you, it's going to lead them back to this space. And we want to be ready to receive them and not throw them away, not push them aside, but to offer them Jesus in a very real and relational way. Lord, I don't know what they're dealing with. I know that they're an informed generation, but I know that they're also a troubled generation. Sin is running rampant in our society, and they're exposed to it. They have seen more at their age than I did at mine. Many of them have watched their friends murdered and killed. They've seen so much dysfunction in their homes. It's a wonder how they've been able to manage so far. I know, Lord, it's only because you've been keeping them. And I believe, Lord, you have been preserving them for an hour that is to come. Hallelujah. That you've been keeping them safe. And you have yet to bring them before the world. I'm thanking you for the process. I know it may be painful. But I believe, Lord, that all of that pain is going to be going to bring about power in their lives. They'll be stronger and better in Jesus' name. It's going to teach them the things that society will never tell them. So we thank you for the journey, Lord. I thank you, the Heavenly Father, that, that they're going to assume their places, that they're going to grow in their faith, 
that they're going to be the torchbearers, the trendsetters in Jesus' name. They're going to make a difference in their own generation and say to a world that is headed perhaps in another direction that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except they come through him. And so we pray for them. We pray, Lord, for all those persons who are the most influential in their lives. Now, Lord, if that influence is not healthy, Lord, give them the strength to choose again. If they have an influence in their life, their Heavenly Father, that is only taking away from them but not adding anything to them. Help them, Lord, to readjust and to keep in their circle only those who have an appreciation for where they're trying to go and what they're trying to do is our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us as older believers to be more open and inviting and not just see them as young people, but see them as people in Jesus' name. We're guilty, Lord, of attaching all these tags and titles and brackets and barriers. It's because we don't know how to talk, Lord. Help us with our conversation then. And help us, Lord, to speak in a way that is productive and truly reflective of who they are and not how we've seen them. They are of God. For Lord, they belong to you. And they have already overcome that arch enemy, Satan, who seeks to bring about their death, they have already overcome him because greater is the one who lives inside than the one that is in the world. Help them to feed the one inside, to develop and to nurture the one inside so that they'll have strength to stand and make sense of the world that's on the outside. This is our prayer. We pray for them. We pray for them only. In Jesus' name. Now may the grace of our Lord, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may they rest and rule and remain over your life until the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his matchless name we pray. And every believing heart said amen and amen. Come on, don't let them get out of here without hugging, shaking hands. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.